it's time for a test, my Python road test. So, you know, we do stuff in Python, we need to use Python, and there's a bunch of things that um, it's easy to forget how to do. So this is kind of like a warm up. If you're working on a numerical problem in Python, and this is for NumPy Python, some people call it NumPy, which is probably correct. But how do you do these different things? And we need to know how to do these things because uh, that way we can use those things to do awesome stuff in physics. So this is just like uh, a checkup. Let's just get to it. I wrote a bunch of questions and I'm gonna do these questions and show you how to do them. Okay, import NumPy and matplotlib. Okay, so let's just do that. So in th I'm using Jupyter Notebook. Um, you could do this in Google Colab uh, and that's all I'm gonna say. So let's just get started import numpy as np, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So, uh, and I'm gonna run it. And it's still running. Did I do something? No, it did. Okay. So, you know, when we import these modules, I just wanna make sure that you understand. So NumPy is a module and it has a bunch of cool stuff in there and then you might want to import different modules and so the way you tell Python which module you're using is to use this, this code name that you give it. So I'm giving NumPy the code name MP. So if I say NP.SQRT, that says take the square root function from the NumPy module. If I use something from the plotting module, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use PLT. And you can give those different names, but everyone pretty much does this. If you do something different, People might look at you weird, which maybe that's what you want. Okay, so we got those modules and we're gonna use these for the, the rest of the stuff. Number two, create, is this big enough? Let's see if I make that bigger. That's, I, I like that a little bit bigger. Okay, create an array of X values from one to z from zero to one evenly sp split into 10 spaces. Now this is just something that we see a lot and I'm gonna go ahead and make it. Uh, so we're gonna use the the numpy lin space uh, function. I'm going to say x equals np.lin space. Now lin space, you need to say what number you're going to start, what number you're going to finish, and how many spaces in between it. I'm going to do it wrong. So I'm going to say 0 to 1 with 10 spots. And I'm going to run that. And let's print out x. And so it's not that many that we can't print. And there you go. Now I have 0, 0.1111.222. That's not probably what we expected, right? Because that doesn't have 10 spaces, 10 intervals. Uh, that's actually nine intervals because it set zero and one as the boundaries. And so that's two. And then I have uh, eight left to split between the next nine numbers. So that's why they're not evenly spaced. I can fix this by going 10 plus one or just type 11 and I rerun it. Now it's what we want. And that's something that's not super critical, but it does come up, right? How do you make that, that space? And this is an array, which is, looks like a list, but it's not, it's like a list, but it's like awesome, okay. Next question. Create an array of values for V equals, X, oh, it should be X squared, I'm sorry. I just copied and pasted. X squared that's the same length as the X array. This in web v python wouldn't be hard but it wouldn't be trivial here it's trivial watch this v equals uh x squared remember squared in python is star star i'm going to print it print v so it's that simple if x is an array i can square that and it just takes each element and squares it uh, I can set that equal to another variable. Now that variable V becomes another array and it has a list of numbers. So this is, you see right here, 0.9, you can't see that one, this one right here, 0.8 squared is 0.64. It, it did it, right? So that's really powerful. That's one of the things that makes these arrays so great. Plot X versus V. Okay, let's do this. This one's pretty easy. PLT dot plot. I'm going to make a terrible graph. X, V. That's it. That's all I have to do. Run that. There's my plot. Okay, now I'm going to make it a little bit better. I'm going to say plt.grid. That turns on a grid. I'm going to say plt.x label. And I'm going to say x. That's going to be the name of the x label. I'm label. I'm going to say plt.y label. 
and I'm going to call that V, no, V, no, V. And I'm going to rerun that cell, and then it looks a little bit better, right? I, I don't, I like graphing in WebVPython better, but this is pretty easy and pretty, pretty straightforward. You can make really quick graphs, just say plot, just, and it does it. You don't have to go through and add each element, because those are arrays. You just give it the arrays, and it says, okay, I know what I'm doing. Okay, next question. Traverse the list of V values and set them all equal to zero, except when X is greater than five. Now, why is this question in here? Because we like to use something like V for um, the potential in an infinite square well, or not even in, want to put a, a perturbation in there. And you need to go through and say, well, what's the V value going to be? I need some way to change the values, okay? So let's do this. I'm going to first traverse it. And there's more than one way to do this. This is the way I like to do it. For i in range length of v. Um, let, me, let me do with this. Print length of v. That just prints how many elements are in v. Remember we did it as 11. OK. Now for i in range length of v, which would be 11, uh, it's going to have i is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm just going to print i just so you can see how that works. And it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's, a, that's 11, right? Because you start at 10. Now I could do something like this. Print v i. And it prints all the values of v. Now what's nice here and what's useful is I can now look at elements in both the x and the v array. And there may be a better way to do this, but this is the way I like to do it. And that's one of the things that you need to think about. When you're, when you're doing stuff, do it the way that makes sense to you. Okay. So what I'm going to do is to say all my values are already at 0. So if it's greater than uh, 0.5, I'm going to change it to, um, no, they're not all at 0. If it's greater, if it's less than 0.5, I'm going to change it to 0. And then I'll leave the other ones alone. So if xi is less than 0 0.5, then set the value, the vi value to 0. vi equals 0. And now I'm going to print that. Print v. And there you go. So 0, 0, 0, 0. And these other ones are what they should be. So that, that did it. Great. Did I want to plot? Let's plot that. It wasn't, it was, it wasn't on here. We're going to do a bonus question. Plot uh, xv. Oh, pi plot. See, pi p plt dot plot. And so you see here that it's zero, and then it just jumps up to here. So I have a large. Uh, this should be a vertical line, but you know it's a finite element points. I only have eleven points, so that's why it looks slanted right there. It's not. It just that's a point, and that's a point. Okay. Make a 6 by 6 matrix with the diagonal elements equal to 4 and give it the name M. This is one that I always forget. So let's just make, give it a name, M equals NP dot diag makes a diagonal matrix. Now what do you put in the middle of that? I'm going to say NP dot ones and I need to say how many of them? 6. And let's print that. So that made a diagonal matrix uh, with, uh, can I move this up? Hmm, I can't. Uh, with all the diagonals as one. Now, if I want to change those to four, that's not too hard. I go up here and say four, no, four, oops, stay on page, four times. Now I'll rerun that, and now the diagonal elements are four. And it is six by six. One, two, three, four, no, what is it? One, two, three, four, five. I couldn't count. Um, one of the things that also is kind of useful, if you have large matrices, you could say print m.shape, and it says 6 by 6. So if you don't want to count, you can do that. Um, so we got that, 6. Okay, add an off diagonal uh, matrix to the matrix with values of negative 2. m equals m plus np.diag, np.1s. I'm going to say, how many of them do I need? How many ones do I need on the off diagonal? So if I have a diagonal, it's going to be 6. 
the off diagonal is actually going to be one less than that. So it's going to be, I'm going to put it as six minus one. And uh, I need to shift them, right? So if I just do six minus one, it won't fix. There's more, M already has, uh, is six by six. So if I shift this with the NP dot diag and I say one, it shifts it up one diagonal. Okay, so let's print out M. And there you go. So it did it. You see, there's my diagonals four, and I added this uh, off diagonal of ones. Now, I wanted that to be negative two. So I just go up here and say negative two times. And there. It didn't do it. Negative two times. Why didn't it do that? Negative two, zero. NP dot diag, NP one, six minus one, one. Now it's doing weird stuff. Now it's one. Oh, because so I put minus two times. No, why is that? What the heck? Plus. See, it didn't do it. Six minus one, five. It's misbehaving for some reason. Okay, that looks right. Plus, let's say plus minus two times. Huh. NP dot diag ones. That's really weird. Let's see. Okay, let me look real quick. Uh, I did this. I'm gonna just check because sometimes weird things happen, you know. That do something, and when when you're working and and you can't see something. Negative two diag np dot diag. Np dot diag was maybe it's something wrong with m. Four times np dot diags np16, that's right. Let's not print this shape. Maybe that's doing something. Okay, that works. I don't know what happened. When I, when I, when I did the shape, it, something weird happened. That's fine. Okay, we're good. Uh, and then now we're gonna add a lower diagonal. It looks the same thing, right? It's gonna be the same thing as this. I'm gonna copy this. And then all I need to do is do a lower diagonal. I'm going to say minus one. I didn't print it. And there. Okay. And that's minus four. What is going on? Now it's minus six. Oh, it's adding to that every time. Oh, okay. I see what's going on. So let's just go up here and do... Um, Go back to this first one. I'm going to copy this. No, I'm going to copy this first one. And then down here, let's just say uh, this. Okay. And then minus two times NP dot diag. I kept, that's what I was doing. I kept adding it to the same thing. Uh, NP dot ones, uh, five, one, minus two times np dot diag np dot ones five negative one ugh not doing well in my test here most recent call okay let's see Let's just do this. Let's get rid of that one. Oh, I see I had an M in there. I didn't print it. Okay, that's right. I'm just gonna copy this and put another one in there and change that to negative one. Okay, got it. Whew. Almost failed my own test, that'd be embarrassing. Okay, print the, 
print two eigenvalues from the matrix M. So here we're going to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. I'm going to call them E and psi equals np dot linear alg dot eig h of M. So now that's going to assign all the eigenvalues and eigenvectors to E and psi. If I want to print the first two, print uh, E. The first one is E0. The second one is E1. There. Got them. Okay, we're moving right along. Number 10, print the first eigenvector. Now, in this case, one of the things you have to remember is that the eigenvectors are the column vectors in the in the output matrix. And so I need to transpose it and print out the first column vector. So let's print uh, psi dot t is the transpose of the whole psi solution. And I just want the first one zero. So there's my first eigenvector done. And those are things that we need to remember how to do. Recreate the vector m and make it 99 by 99. Plot the first two eigenvectors. So let's just start over again. Um, so I will say, yeah, that's pretty easy. Actually, I can just go up here and copy this. I'm going to copy that whole thing. And I'm just going to, I don't want to print it. I'm going to change this to 99, change this to 98, one less change this one to 98 and that's that now I need to find oops okay now I need to find the eigenvalues so I'm going to do the same thing e psi equals np dot lin alg dot eig h of m and now I want to uh, plot the first two eigenvectors. And I want to plot them as a function of x, I guess. I didn't tell myself, but I'm going to tell myself that now, which I don't have x. So let's just plot them. So if you plot, if you just do plot one variable, it just lists them out in evenly spaced. And so that's not the best thing, but I, I poorly word the question, and it's my fault, so that's fine. Plot, oh, plt dot plot. Uh, psi dot t zero that's my first one plt dot plot psi dot t one that's the second one and there you go and so that those that is the infinite square well it looks like that shape so that's fine okay next we're down here we're doing great make an array called y from zero to one with 20 spaces so y equals np dot lin space lin space uh, 0 1 20 plus 1 I'm gonna do this n plus 1 and I'm gonna put over here n equals 20 that's the way we're gonna do it normally now I want to print out the first print out the list without the first or last element so let's print y and see what that looks like okay that's the 20 now I don't want to have the 0 I don't want to have the 1 and we're doing this because you need this when you plot. Print y colon one or bracket one colon negative one. So that's going to cut off the two ends. Let's see if that works. So there we go. Zero, zero point five, blah, 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 blah. All the way up here. This one starts at zero point five. This one ends at one. This one ends at 0.95. Boom. That's it. We passed the test. I had a couple errors, but I fixed them, and that's okay to fix. So there you go. There's your, your numpy Python road test. These are the kind of things that we need to know. Now, there's some other stuff in there, too. Uh, there's animated graphs, which are not that much fun, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, but we'll get to that later. So this is your warm-up exercise you need to do before you do, uh, you know, Python calculations. And we're talking about square well stuff. Okay, good. Good job. The end.